Hey hi, this is Yashwant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to give some tips on how a good fresher resume should look like. So at the end of this video, there is special giveaway for you. So don't miss out watch uh, watching this video till then. So before jumping on, let's have an intro, please. So resume preparation is something that every fresher or every final year engineering graduate has a lot of questions on. So even during my graduation or even, uh, with, even with my interactions towards many students, so lot of students have this doubt, this kind of doubt, like how a good fresher resume should look like. So how to make our resume? So how to uh, I mean go on with the different constraints on resume? So do we need to make different resumes for different profiles? So these are all the common doubts that every engineering graduate or every final year engineering graduate have. So I will clarify this now. So if you look on to uh, if you look onto the general skeleton of any resume, so you will find out many things, right? Uh, some will write on with their address, their personal details. Um, I mean their career objective, declarations, hobbies, certifications, co-curricular, extracurricular. These are all the garbage stuff. Uh, if you ask me, uh, if you really need to put all those details in your resume, I think the answer is strictly no. Because you don't need to put all those unwanted details. Because just remember, if you are a recruiter and if you are hiring some candidates, so do you really look into all those details? What your objective is? Do you think they have enough time to read all those details? No. And do they really need your personal details, the name of your parents, the address and the hobbies like whether you are a good cricket player or a good um, I mean uh, actor. So people don't need that right. So if you are applying for a job, I mean a particular role and if you are mainly a fresher, they have certain um, I mean certain expectations from the, from the candidates. So they don't look into all those details. So I will tell you there are only five important uh, categories that a fresher resume should have and recruiters only look into those and the first and foremost thing is header so make sure the title of your resume is your name if you are a fresher if you are applying for a fresher role make sure you have your name as a header so that um, as as soon as they find out your resume so they just have the idea that so they are uh, viewing a particular candidate's resume so make sure you highlight your name uh, with uh, big titles and under your title so just include these four things the first thing the place uh, where you are from the mobile number so if they find out it is a good match they will reach out to you so for that give you mobile number and email so they both are enough and if you have done decent amount of projects so if, uh, so in the later sections they may find out what all the things that you have done for that include your github profile that's it these four are enough under your title and that um, that includes the end of your header. So just make sure you have your title with good and uh, decent font and under the title give your place, contact details and your github profile and that um, that makes the end of the header details. And what next? So do you think, do you really need to have carry objective in that? So if you write it, there is no problem but in my point of view that is of uh, no need because people don't, uh, recruiters don't really uh, take enough time to read that description because they all know you copy paste from somewhere right or you copy paste from your friend's resume. So if you if you go and find out different resumes 90% of the career objective is same because they generally do copy pasting they don't uh, write their own stuff. So uh, forget about that even though you have it or don't have it there is uh, it doesn't make much sense and next thing is education details so if you are an experienced candidate it also really doesn't matter but if you are a fresher and if you are applying for um, i mean a companies like service based mncs they have to take care uh, they need that details so just include your ssc or plus 2 or diploma and your graduation details just you don't need everything to write the address of your college and all those things you just write your college name the branch and your percentage that's it and yes um, year of graduation or year of passing 
so just make sure it is short and sweet so you don't uh, you don't make them uh, difficult to read out all those details so just make it easy for them to understand to read and understand so because uh, the reason why most of the people need your graduation details when you are a fresher is they just uh, find out the graph so how the graph goes on so if the graph grows from like if you were uh, getting 18 scc and 85 in inter and 19 your graduation um, it does it doesn't really happen but yeah so they find out that you are a growing person you are i mean a scalable growing person and if that is a reverse they will get an impression that so you are losing your percentage based on time so it just creates an impression but uh, make but remember people generally uh, don't consider all those things so they have a cutoff like people with 65% above or people with 70% above in all their academics uh, will be considered so if you satisfy all those things uh, they will just ignore them and here comes the important section that is skills so skills is somewhat um, consider uh, a major factor in your resume so how you arrange your skills so some people may write something like this skills they will write down all those long ways that they know C, comma, Java, comma, JavaScript, PHP, um, everything, MS Office, uh, even they will write communication, interpersonal. So they write everything uh, in a single or two lines. So it doesn't really make sense. So you, you need to write down what you actually know and don't copy paste these skills from other people. So generally what people uh, do mistake in writing their skills is they write down all those all the skills that they know i mean they hear from somebody else they will they will write down all those skills so it creates a negative impression by the way because if you are applying for a role uh, which has the same salary structure for all the all the candidates that they are applying so writing down all those skills just increases the expectations from you and if you fail to reach those expectations you may lose that job so write down what you actually know and organize that in a good format so you may write something like uh, long wages, uh, you, you just put down a heading called long wages, programming long wages that you know, write down all those long wages that you know. It may be one or two because uh, you don't need to be a superstar in, in writing on all the long wages, that is of no need. And if you know some, if you know different tools, just put down a heading called tools and write down what are the software tools that you know. So I'm, I'm talking about software role here, so if you're, I mean, going for a different role make sure you plan those and after that if you know any uh, platforms like uh, you know some version control tools or something just put down your heading and write down if you know some content management system tools like wordpress all those things put down a heading called cms and write down if you know any different frameworks put down that heading of frameworks and write down angular react or something so you just organize them so if, if they search for a few things in your resume so if you write down uh, in an organized form like by putting subheadings and writing down all those uh, which comes under the subheading it looks it looks very decent and recruiters will easily attract your resume so this is the tip that you need to consider uh, before writing your skill section don't mess your skill section with all those things all those technologies and tools that you know only write down what you know that's it um, because if you know them perfect then it will be a good fit and if you are applying for a service based company or service based MNC so don't experiment with different things because it is easy for you to get placed into your company if you are good at at least one or two uh, different long ways or one or, few long, one, or, one or two different tools so don't confuse the recruiters and don't mess your resume and if you are applying for a startup or product based company then you must be perfect in all those things that you are writing Otherwise, people will will really shoot we shoot with you with uh, different questions on them, and it may be difficult for you. Just write down what you know, what you are good at. That's it. And um, next section is a project a projects uh, section. It is very important, but most of the people most of the people neglect this section. So simply writing down your final year project doesn't really make sense because nowadays everyone know how final year projects are going on like they simply purchase the project from uh, some third party vendors and if, even along with the documentation they will purchase everything and they will just project that as in your resume and if you take four to five projects in the same college all those titles are really same but with different names so if you write down only that uh, final year project name uh, without much knowledge on them it is of no use so make sure you write at least two to three projects in your resume 
and do at least two to three mini projects uh, before going on with your final project. So that really helps you because if they ask you on the projects that you have built, so if you really did them, you will um, you will answer them definitely, right? And that creates uh, that creates an impression for the recruiter that you know something really good. Don't just put down your final year project uh, without having much knowledge and make sure you do your final year project by your own without taking anyone's help because you studied for four years and and you, if you fail to do your final year project by your own then that graduation really doesn't make any sense so so even though you fail to um, i mean do your final year project by your own at least try to do two to three mini projects so mini projects won't be that much huge just a small applications with your knowledge and that really makes sense you because you will be able to answer whatever they ask because you did it on your own so at least do uh, two mini projects on your own and that really makes sense so organize your uh, project section in this way at least make sure you have three projects um, which includes your final year project and two mini projects it is mandatory and after this uh, going on to the final one that is achievement section and this is a misconception for many of the engineering graduates again see if you don't have any achievements leave that section but don't mess up by writing all those stuff like i participated in particular workshop i participated in particular training because people don't really need uh, all those details because if you have money if you have 100 rupees or 200 rupees you can you can anyone can participate so what's uh, what speciality in that so don't put all those stuff so even though uh, I have a certificate on Python, I learned a particular technology from a particular institute. So people really don't care all those things. If you don't have any achievements, achievements in the sense, if you have won something, write down. So you can write something like this. I uh, I won a coding competition in my college and I won a particular paper presentation. I presented a paper on particular technology and I won that. So these are all achievements. Sir. Just participating in a competition or just participating in a seminar uh, doesn't really make sense uh, to write down as an achievement. So make sure uh, you are clear about what your achievements are. If you really did something, write down. And don't write something like if you are applying for a software MNC and you are writing something like this. Um, I, I am a runner up in uh, 100 meters uh, running race. So people really don't need that. So if you are applying for an athletics athletics competition or something, uh, it really makes sense. But you are applying for a software job and your achievements are uh, not anywhere related to them then it is of no use so make sure your achievements of what you really want and what you uh, really consider them as your own achievements and don't write all those things like i participated in so and so and i get certificate from so and so all those things and these are all the five sections the header sk education skills projects and achievements only these five sections matter and remember if you don't have any achievements leave that section don't write down all those things and it creates a negative impression and one more tip is don't make your resume too lengthy so make sure you fit that by one page or one and a half page that really uh, help that really matters because recruiters won't take much time to view fresher resumes so they have an assumption that freshers only know a few kind of things so even if you know something more write down very short and sweet don't uh, i mean increase your resume size and and yes so plan your resume accordingly and one more uh, one more thing is don't mess up your resume with all the things that you don't know and that you are not related to and leave all of these uh, leave all other details like personal details uh, some even write gender some even write their family names hobbies strengths negatives you don't need all those things to write in your resume because people don't really read them even though they read them they will not consider so if they really want to know, they will ask in your interview. So don't just write all those things. And yes, um, this is a thing that I want to share. And as I said in the, uh, as I said earlier, I have a special giveaway for you. So in the description section, you will find out the Skillshare uh, teacher referral link. So which includes two months unlimited courses. So you will get a free premium account of Skillshare for two months free. You don't need to pay for anything. Just you need to enter your card details for proof and you will get two months of learning for free. You can learn all those courses, including mine. Also check out the courses on Udemy of mine. So which are, which are almost related to uh, Python. Also some projects 
which will help you uh, which are major project oriented courses uh, many project courses i have everything in my udemy profile so i have all those links in the description so please go and check out and thank you for watching please subscribe to the channel and if you really like this video and if you feel that it will be useful for someone else please share this video thank you